Hello everybody, this is at a survival run with a two-handed spear as requested on Bridgetown. The spear itself is not too bad, I mean it does very good damage with charging attack against uh, unarmored opponents. As you see it's 93 damage compared to Halbert. Halbert has around 106 damage to armored opponents. And so yeah, it's not too bad. But the problem with a charging attack is that if you fail to gather enough momentum, you'll simply be stuck in one place until you press right mouse button. So it, it takes a little bit of finesse as well um, to master this weapon for charging attacks. Otherwise, uh, it lacks slashes, so any uh, fights against multiple opponents, like three enemies, is almost impossible. So you actually have to be with your uh, teammates in uh, a line. So this is very good formation weapon, but not very good in a roaming position. So let's see. Uh, we are on the first objective. Uh, it's capturing, clearing the bridgehead. So uh, at the beginning there are peasants, they're really easy uh, kills to gather. And, oh, I forgot to mention, this weapon actually suffers from slower combos. So it's even worse than, um, you know, uh, than uh, 100 spear. It does probably a little bit more damage than 100 spear, but it's not consequential. It's just very slow if you chain attacks. So, yeah, um, I'm not a big fan of this weapon. Yeah, we captured the first objective. In the beginning there were just uh, peasants, so which was quite easy. Now uh, the knights are spawning on the second objective, where we have to burn the orchard. I see a lonely archer here, and he's dead. You see, one charging attack takes away uh, the archer. It knocks him, due to archer having 90, 90 HP. But I'm not really sure about the mechanic of uh, when people are knocked and when they're killed in Chilri. Maybe somebody can explain that in the comments. Since um, when you pick up the archer it just says it has 90 uh, HP and I deliver 93 damage so it should be a kill not a knock. But it's just me. Alright, uh, not consequential. Let's continue on. So quickly grabbing apples, uh, it helps to restore your health. And you do not need to go to the ammo crate, which is good. So beware about locations of food in each map. So you will sp send, spend less time on going to the ammo crate. So we have to gather some torches from this apple. Not sure what are they doing, apple cider probably. They're boiling the apples. So we burned one shack. And we'll continue on by doing some more objective. Because I see my teammates are not particularly eager. And I have a free reign now next to that to view of those torches. So I can assist in getting the objective. And out of four places we need to burn, I burn three. So I think it's a good effort. And uh, even though objective has moved now to the second stage of this uh, particular burning the estate objective, I can still grab a torch from the first phase of the objective. Uh, there's, I think, a time limit on that. And then move it to the second stage. And that's what I'm doing. Since I have a torch and my main weapon is now a hatchet, which is quite short range and not particularly suited for this class, I want to hide here just to ensure that it passes away passes from the objective so I can pass and uh, using this tactic I try to go behind the objective so I can burn it let's see apparently I made some miscalculation uh, it looked like uh, there is something to be burned but this objective of this particular building was already on fire so anyway no problem I uh, continue on got a hit from the war axe this looks like a good player. Also, he uses feints. Almost got me. That overhead would not look pretty on me. It's good that uh, he was not able to complete it before I stabbed him. And now the third phase of this objective. Uh, it's probably uh, the hardest to do as a attacker. Because defenders do defend here quite often. Alright, caught on fire by a friendly. So it doesn't burn as much. Uh, doesn't do as much damage 
and I healed up um, revived friendly. Now moving to the last phase of the objective. Uh, just bear in mind there is a ballista shooting, so always keep an eye. So now its friend is mounting it, so I can easily pass away. Pass through to the objective. I see enemies healing, but there is also one more enemy coming, so I would not risk engaging. Because it will be uh, two against one. Now I'm abusing the map mechanic. So I know this is uh, the out of bounds for the attackers, but it's not for me. So see, uh, they run away. And now I can freely engage just one enemy. And he's not happy. By using dash behind, I created enough distance for his weapon not to hit, and mine would be in range. Yeah, use dashes. I mean, uh, I can already tell if a person is using dashes. Not in duels, but uh, here in TO. Because in uh, duels, I think it's about stamina conservation is more important. So, but here in team objective, always use dashes. But also bear in mind that stamina is running... When stamina is running low, you won't be able to defend. So use it uh, when you can, but also have in mind that you have to replenish it. This is the place where you gather the torches uh, for in the f last phase of this objective. And I'm going in for this particular house. Now I was able to lead it on fire. Again, there's absolutely no need to continue tracking how it's burning. Because I saw from the UI that it's burning, so that's good enough. Now healing up a bit here with a flag. And I'll go in again to the objective revived and another friendly. You see, it's very, very slow. Sometimes uh, I'm able to time correctly, but also stabbing is pretty hard when enemy is moving and you're moving. So again, not my particular uh, finest moments here. I don't like this weapon too much, but a request is a request. Now the enemy tries to heal, and I'm using a throwing weapon ability with button G to get rid of the enemy. So if they heal, they won't be able to block. Otherwise, if you in this situation don't try to heal, instead try to block incoming projectiles, if possible. And now we're off to the next objective. We have to break uh, the gates. It's not too hard. Sometimes defense defense here, but it's more often than not they don't. It's pretty straightforward. We have to go to the gate and destroy it. Well, what I like to do is just to keep the sides clear so friendlies can gather enough objective points but I instead would focus on incoming reinforcements. Now you see I tried to use Q with a special attack and instead of actually doing any damage it just stood there bracing the weapon. So it's probably anti-cav uh, this stance because I that's really big. Be you become a stationary target and you can be hit by enemy archers and also enemy ev any enemy from the side. Now I see here my friend is losing battle, so I would rather retreat because I know I will be against two, and I don't want it like that. Again, friendly uh, died. Now when there's only one left, I can continue. On. I'm using faint. So I was able to catch him off guard. Of guard. Now return back to a friendly archers. I see enemy footman incoming. And he dies. Yeah, I defended two archers. Good, they keep on peppering those guys on the wall. And we were able to destroy the gates. Which is good. We can continue to the next objective. So next objective uh, involves us ransacking uh, inside of the city. Basically, it means there are some uh, cards and some objectives that we have to destroy by using our weapons. This time, not with torches. So that's uh, what we'll do. At the moment, I'm changing my offhand off hand weapon because my initial, the one given to me, is not good enough, the hatchet. So I'd rather use something more substantial. This was, uh, I think, the, sh the sword or the short sword. Anyway, it has uh, the skin of Kopesh, the Egyptian weapon, bronze weapon. That looks good. 
so I'd rather fight with a better off offhand uh, secondary weapon instead of the one I had. Now there's plenty of food here too, so indulge yourselves, why not? When friendlies are fighting and you don't find openings and need to heal, do it. As I said, this weapon excels in formation fighting and you'll see what I'm talking about. You see I'm kicking enemy away, I'm able to engage and also keep distance, uh, help friendlies, but also keep together with the uh, formation. Enemy was ducking behind the cart and he immediately received a spearhead, sorry, a spearhead, yeah, to the face. So yeah, uh, distance wise very good weapon and formation fighting very good too. So I have friendlies on left and right, uh, usually they do attack but it doesn't do too much damage. Also I'm keeping my eyes on my health bar, so it's not won't be surprising. Not a bad person, he swing the the great sword at me. So what I do when I am low health, I don't want to use my bandages because there is an a ammo crate there, but it's usually used by friendlies so much that you have to sit in a queue and wait until you can heal up. So instead I healed up with food and also the flag. Again hit by friendlies, but I still retain most of the health. Now formation fighting also involves getting behind the enemy, and like I did so here. So whilst friendly is attacking uh, through the shield, I try to go behind and attack where it hurts more. But it's mostly formation fighting. You see I'm always almost will help with friendlies. Not a bad molar. But also, have in mind that I'm not proficient with spear too much. I make a lot of mistakes. But you see, uh, uh, lack of skills, it's still... You can make up with um, overall objective and positioning. So positioning is more important than weapon proficiency. In uh, this particular um, survival objective. Two easy two kills. I was able to help friend this and also did not get a single hit back because this is a great formation fighting weapon and formation together we're strong but alone uh, it would, it's challenging again formation sometimes I get hit friendlies that's inevitable if we're in the blob and here too unfortunately this happens I try to heal but unfortunately <laughs> my bandit my healing pack did not land correctly, but it's inconsequential. We move back uh, to the objective. Formation fighting, so I extruded a bit, hit the enemy and went back into formation. No assisting here, that's two against one, but it's very hard uh, to fight if you're in narrow space. Instead of helping on the left side, I see I can get rid of one and now I can assist other friendlies. Again, formation fighting all the way. Now that's a really interesting place where I was hit uh, with a war axe even though I was behind the pole. So I'm not sure if that's a bug or a feature, but it did not seem right to me. I specifically used map ob objects to defend me against swings. It didn't work out this time. Still I was in a healthy uh, pool of health, so I can still take some hits. Not too much, but this one I could. And now I'm fighting on objective, together with uh, friendlies all over me. They do hit me, and I hit them too. <laughs> this is what happens if you're in a bit pull up. But having uh, a weapon that actually stabs in all the overheads means that you do not hit friendlies as much. Otherwise, usually newer players like to slash when they are inside the uh, uh, objective with fr other friendlies, and they end up hitting mostly friendlies instead of enemies. So yeah, if you're new to the game, just remember, if you are in formation, it's more beneficial to use stabs and overheads, unless there are weapons that are really bad at it. Please use stabs and overheads. It will help you master the game mechanics and also uh, master the team play. The town is in ruins. So yeah, we finally had a few seconds left and we actually managed to capture uh, destroy the, the statue, which is the last objective to be destroyed in this particular stage of the map. Now there's still some stragglers here from the enemy. Need to get rid of them uh, before proceeding to the next objective. The next objective involves us uh, throwing 
the nobles out of the windows. If you think that's brutal, you haven't played Chivalry 1, where you had to bring peasants and behead them. <laughs> so yeah, you bring them on like a, to executioner spot and then you have to behead them. Anyway, this was from Chivalry 1. It was much more brutal. It's much, it was much more medieval or realistic, but probably uh, it would not sit well in our current age of uh, woke society. So yeah, so from my point of view, um, there's quite a few places you can die uh, in this particular stage, and there are some chandeliers hanging f from the ceilings inside the building. So I'd rather get rid of some stragglers outside, and then we can try and poke around. Since I'm on uh, my last uh, objective in this map and I played really well, quite happy with the score, especially with a weapon I'm not too familiar with, I'll try to play even more careful. And that's uh, the noble that has just landed on his feet. Unfortunately, his feet were not strong enough to survive this fall. He should uh, practice more parkour. So there's the chandelier still active. I really don't want to go there. There was quite a few survival rounds that were ended by friendlies too, where they activated that chandelier. So instead I'm helping out friendlies and keeping off uh, the enemy spawn wave coming in. Again observing the stairs. Maybe I can abuse my... Uh, yeah, you see, abuse my position and I was able to score a hit, but did not pursue for a kill. Because I was afraid that more enemies would come from uh, the stairs. Apparently they're busy, and so it's time for me to bounce. Two easy kills, backstabs all the way. So three friendlies saved, and now they can rejoin the fight for the objective. So time wise, uh, some bug here it made me jittering. No worries, uh, it's not green breaking, so don't worry about fixing it. I will just not jump on this table ever again. Now a back, a hit in the back by the enemy. He's using the glaive. Glaive is pretty bad weapon in my view. I mean, I don't like to can keep on hitting the enemy, and he can still be able to stand still even though taking three to four hits. Usual weapon should take only around two uh, heavy hits, and that will be it. But not the glaive. Glaive is pretty weak in my view. It's quick, but it's weak. It's uh, similar to War Club in somewhat, very quick weapon too, but too weak in my view. Because I really like to go after archers, and since there is no um, armor on the archers, the glaive and the War Club do not get additional damage. So yeah, this is the last weapon I killed, I scored 45 kills. Uh, quite happy with my performance with a weapon I'm not familiar with. Thank you, and have a good day.